Hello, hello everyone. It's me, Arden Lee. I am back today with another video. And in today's video, I want to talk about the importance of using intentional language. Now, what is intentional language, you might ask? Intentional language is the idea that we are deliberately and carefully choosing the words that we use to describe our perceptions of ourselves and also of the world around us, of our lives and the realities that we are creating minute by minute, choice by choice and making sure that those words are in alignment with our intentions that we want to manifest for ourselves, with our goals and the results that we ultimately want to get. Even if we are not in that place yet, we wanna make sure that our language is orienting us in that direction. It is a far more powerful technique than most people understand. So I'm gonna get into a little bit about the mechanics of that. I'm gonna get a little bit into uh, some of the problems that I see uh, that are incredibly widespread in our culture right now where people are turning to snark and defeatism in ways that um, that is unconsciously manifesting and keeping themselves in uh, in these vicious cycles and uh, then i'm going to talk a little bit about what uh, what you can do starting today to change your language and start moving things in the right direction for yourself so before i get into that topic if you are not already familiar with me and my work, my name is Arden Lee. I am the creator of The Repatterning Project, and that is an eight-week course where we come together in a group to look at our beliefs, our thoughts, all the things that we think are true about the world, all our patterns, our unconscious habits, the things that were socially conditioned into us, as well as uh, imprinted by traumas, imprinted by early, uh, early behavioral experiences, and we really look at those things at the root and we, uh, we, we change them, we reprogram them, we choose new beliefs for ourselves in order to start optimizing our lives for happiness and success. So if that sounds like something that you're interested in, go ahead and look at this in the description box where I have left a link to a free PDF guide about the Repatterning Project. There's also a link there to the Repatterning Parlor, which is a free group that I curate on Facebook full of like-minded individuals who are also looking to optimize their lives for happiness, success, wealth, abundance, love, freedom, creativity, all that good stuff that we want. So go ahead and check those things out and, uh, uh, and let me know. Let me know if you join the group. If you join the group because you watched uh, this video on YouTube, you know, make a post and say hi and, and let me know. I love to know uh, where, people, uh, where people found me. So uh, getting on to the topic at hand, <laughs> let's talk a little bit about intentional language. Um, the, mechanics of, the mechanics of intentional language are something that's been talked a lot about in neurolinguistic programming, otherwise known as NLP, for example, which is a, a sort of soft science about the ways that the language we use can, uh, can program our unconsciousness and uh, affect how we see the world, affect how uh, others see us as well. Uh, whether we're speaking to ourselves or we're communicating with others, of course, you know, that's language affects both of those things. And uh, it's also some of the basis of the law of attraction, which I understand is, you know, the law of attraction itself is, um, it's often described in many very simplistic and reductive ways, and that turns a lot of people off to it. Uh, but essentially what the law of attraction is, and I may have another video on this that I posted a couple weeks ago, I'm pretty sure I gave a talk on it. But what the law of attraction essentially is, is it's hacking your confirmation bias. It's taking, um, if, if confirmation bias is the idea that you are seeing more and more of the things that you have already confirmed in your mind exist in reality, then, uh, then the law of attraction basically says, hey, if, uh, if your confirmation bias is like a nuclear reactor and you're putting something in the center of it and that spreads out through you know, the rest of the world that you're perceiving around you, then let's make sure that what you're putting into that core reactor is something that you do want more of so that you're not focusing on the things that you don't want because you're, the universe does not understand negatives. So you wanna put in the thing that you feel positively about, you wanna put in the thing that you wanna see more of, put that into that center of your confirmation bias, hack your beliefs so you can start seeing more around you. So using intentional language is by far, in my opinion, the best technique that you can first of all start today that costs nothing <laughs> and uh, that only requires you to bring some more mindfulness to the words that you're using about yourself and about the world and about anything really 
and making sure that they are attuned to the way that you want to see things, right? Well, how do we do that in the year of our Lord 2018, right? When there is so much of a dumpster fire going on out in the world, it is so tempting to just say the world is a dumpster fire and you know, there it is and just leave it at that. So that's why I wanna talk a little about this trend that I'm seeing of nihilism and pessimism and defeatism, especially in millennials. And I don't blame us, I'm a millennial too. And certainly, certainly there is enough evidence to show that the world that we entered into as adults, especially in my generation, is a world that was not set up to, um, to be easy for us or to allow for our success or for our growth. The greed of previous generations, um, you know, the greed of previous generations essentially manifested a world in which, you know, something I was scrolling by on Facebook today from a, a, an article from a pretty reputable source was saying, for example, that uh, there is nowhere you can live in America where minimum wage will uh, will make your your average rent requirement essentially. So um, so yeah, we don't live in a world that uh, that is looking out for the individual. We live in a world that is uh, that has been constructed by those who came before us and has been constructed uh, in greed. You know, same with the environment. You know, um, people who are in older generations. Uh, created systems that have been slowly destroying our environment without really thinking very much about what they were doing uh, and now you know future generations are trying to play catch up in order to um, to prevent uh, pr to prevent not only climate change but to prevent total annihilation within the next you know 100 to 300 years so so yeah uh, I understand where the world is uh, is fairly depressing <laughs> and it can be tempting to to just want to pull our weighted blankets over our heads and say everything sucks and um, and I don't have the coping skills to, to deal with this. And believe me, I have a lot of days like that myself. There's, you know, I know I, I come on and I make these videos to you guys, but, um, but you know, there's so, uh, <laughs> there's a reason that I know how to do this and that's because I had to teach myself how to do it because I was in those those very same predicaments for a long time. So, so what I'm seeing on so much social media is that there's so much snark going around. There's so much pessimism and defeatism and um, especially memes like, you know, oh, all my childhood friends are getting married and buying a house and I'm, you know, in a onesie eating potato chips in bed. Ha <laughs> ha. And and you guys, um, do you want to be eating a onesie? Eating, <laughs> do you want to be eating a onesie? Do you want to be eating potato chips wearing a onesie in bed? You know, is that really the life that you want for yourself? You may want a life where uh, you set yourself up for sustainability so that you can stay in bed in a onesie and eat potato chips whenever you want. But is a life where you're just zoning out and and you know uh, narcotizing your your pain, you know, anesthetizing your pain with with Netflix and junk food and uh, or whatever else you're using for your means of escape? Is this what you want, right? So if it's not what you want, then stop speaking it into existence, essentially. That's kind of the, the crux of this entire video, is if it's not what you want, stop speaking it into existence, right? And what you may say to me is, well, Arden, the truth is my life, my life is like X, Y, Z. You know, if I said something else, I would be lying. And the point is that there are so many of us who feel like we have to use our language to describe things the way that they already are. And certainly we don't want to lie, we don't want to fabricate things to ourselves or to other people, but we want to start orienting our language so that our compass is pointed toward the direction that we want to be in, right? What we can say is, hey, um, wow, I've had, um, I've had trouble getting motivated lately, but now that I've identified that problem, I'm going to work on that. I'm gonna work on feeling motivated. I'm gonna work on finding what I uh, what I want to do. You know, um, how easy is it for for me to feel motivated every morning? If I just remember, you know, if I just wake up in the mornings and um, if I start my day by saying like I feel motivated today, even if you just say it right now, just say it with gusto. I feel motivated today, right? It's already my speaking that 
feels different energetically in my body than I felt just a couple of, you know, maybe like a minute or two ago when I was talking about defeatism and pessimism, right? We align ourselves with these different vibrations and by vibration, I essentially mean energetic signatures. And by that, I mean, I mean mood. I mean the thing that you're feeling. I mean that color of your emotion, et cetera, et cetera. So, so I really want you guys to watch what kind of language you're using to describe yourselves and the world um, even when even when things are difficult, you know, I struggle all the time with trying to balance um, advocacy and awareness for what's going on in the world and the ways in which, you know, um, the ways in which my generation was set up uh, without, uh, you know, without that hand up to success that uh, that my parents generation had. And um, to balance that with um, with creating the reality that I want with the understanding that nobody was going to hand anything to me. And, uh, and I kind of got lied to about that, you know, in terms of, uh, of going, you know, to, to college and, hey, if you just get, you know, get good grades and you go to a good college, then you'll be set for life, you'll be fine. That's not what happened at all. One whole bunch of us got saddled with a lot of debt <laughs> and a terrible job market that we emerged into. Um, we were definitely, we were definitely swindled, you know, by, by a lot of the powers that be in this society. Uh, but my point is that if I'm looking to create something for myself, I'm no longer going to rely on the system. I'm going to start to create something within me, right? So I start thinking to myself, all right, um, how am I going to, how am I going to start using, using my language differently? How am I going to start to, uh, to create things differently? And I'm going to say, all right, here's some things that I know to be true. I know that I'm smart. I know that I'm capable. I know that I uh, can can bring things, you know, can bring things to life. I know that I'm a good teacher. I know here's the things that I know I'm good at. And here's how I'm going to move forward on this. So I want you to start catching yourselves, right? There was a, a couple months ago, I was sitting next to a friend of mine uh, at a lecture. And this lecture was, uh, was kind of about how to uh, how to sustain yourself as a creative artist and everything and and what the lecturer asked was you know are you ready really ask yourself are you ready to receive support are you ready to ask for help are you ready to uh you know to welcome more abundance into your life and uh my friend who was sitting next to me who was a, a creative like myself at, at every one of those questions he was like nope 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 and i was like oh my god stop it you're poisoning yourself right now just say yes just say yes and feel how different it feels in your body. Are you ready to receive abundance? Yes, I don't care if that yes feels like a surrender because oftentimes it's in that surrender that we actually find our true power, that we actually give up all our bullshit excuses and start saying, yes, okay, fine, I'm finally ready. I'm finally ready to get rid of whatever is in the way, right? So I want you guys to start imagining that anything that you're saying about yourselves or about the world is is able to come true in an instant because so much of that actually is is not an exaggeration right i see so many people um you know we're obviously we're in the year 2018 we're having a, a total crisis in and heteronormative sexual relations you know we've all we have a, a president in office who has admitted to uh, multiple counts of sexual assault and nobody seems to care uh you know we have uh, the incel movement uh we have um the 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 appointment of kavanaugh uh, to the Supreme Court, you know, even even after um, even after so much evidence came forward of, of his not being not being fit for for such an office, you know, regardless of uh, re you know regardless even if you choose to believe, I mean, I obviously I believe, you know, but regardless of whether you choose to believe Dr. Ford's testimony, he's clearly someone who um, you know who is who is just coasted by on a lot of white male privilege and doesn't doesn't even have the calmness and demeanor to, to sit and have a rational discussion about something in a courtroom. So how can, how can that, po that person possibly be on the Supreme Court, right? So we've had all of these terrible gender relations, I understand, but when I sign on and I see women on social media being like, men are trash, men are trash, I guarantee you they all have terrible, terrible relationships to the men in their lives. I had to change this for myself. It was around the 2016 election and uh, I was so triggered and so upset by all of the sexual assault that was in the media and it was bringing up my own sexual assault trauma for myself. And the last thing that I wanted to do was to, uh, to have compassion for men or reach out, you know, and kind of extend a hand across the aisle or whatever. Um, I was so angry and, and I, I was looking around in my life and I was like, I, I can barely name any men that I find 
safe or supportive of me right now. And I knew that it was on me to change that. I'm like, this is ridiculous. It's not like there's not any safe and supportive men in the entire world. There's 8 billion people on the planet. It's just that right now, um, there's so much sexual assault trauma in my confirmation bias nuclear reactor that that's what I'm seeing everywhere. And it was the most humbling thing that I've maybe ever done. But I went and I put a post on my Facebook and I said, I said, listen, um, here's the problem I'm having. I want to change this belief. So if you're if you're a woman and you can tell me how you, uh, you know, how you changed your relationship uh, to to the men in your life, to the men who are in the world, um, I want to know. Like, let me know how you did that. And if you're a man uh, and you've done something nice for a woman lately, you've done something compassionate, you have a good relationship with a woman in your life that's not just about, you know, appreciating her because she fulfills your needs or whatever, but really is based in mutuality and, uh, and reciprocity. Um, or, or even just something that you've done for a woman in your life lately w without her doing anything back for you. Go ahead and brag about it. I was like, this is the hardest thing. This is the last thing I want to read right now because I'm so angry at men everywhere for letting the world get this bad. But I know that it's up to me to change the orientation on my compass. So it's been two years since then. And I can say, you guys, I have a lot of amazing men in my life right now. I have men who I trust, who I can really call friends. Um, I, I have... I have just more and more incredible men coming into my life all the time. I'm blown away by it. You know, I measure this sometimes by, uh, by some of the dinner parties I throw. You know, what I've noticed lately is that uh, since two years ago, the dinner parties that I am throwing are more and more, there are more and more great men in attendance at them. And since that's kind of, you know, that's one of the metrics that I use to sort of measure my social circles. I'm like, all right, who's coming to my party? Um, it feels really good. So I can say from my own personal experience that changing your language absolutely works. And it's, it's as I said, it costs nothing except a little bit of mindfulness and being willing and able to stop yourself in, in that moment when you catch yourself saying something that you don't want to be true and changing it. And at the very least, even if, you're, even if you don't want to say like, hey, my life is great right now and everything is so happy, focusing on one thing that you like, focusing on something that is a glimmer of hope in the distance, you know, like, hey, maybe the world sucks right now, but you know what? Um, do you know what? Uh, like, I made a new friend yesterday and that's so great. I love that I'm capable of making new friends and that every time I make a new friend, um, I'm restored with a little more hope in humanity and I feel a little better about the world around me. Oh my gosh, if you can say that, if you can say something like that, immediately you are changing your inner state and you're going to change all the results that you are seeing in the world. Again, it is about hacking that confirmation bias and there is nowhere more powerful to start than with your language. If you're a visual person, vision boards work great for this too, but I'm sure that would be another video. <laughs> so for now, what I will say, change your language first. You don't have to wait for the world to change before you change the way that you talk about it. Change the way that you talk about the world and the world in response will change in its relationship to you. And it's just magic. It just happens that way. Try it out. Tell me in the comments how it goes for you. And, uh, and just remember, even when, you're feeling, even when you're feeling bad, even when you're feeling defeated, it's okay to admit what you're feeling and then orient yourself in the right direction. Again, hey, today, I feel terrible, but you know what? Tomorrow's a new day and I'm going to set my intention for tomorrow and here's what I'm going to go ahead and do and these this is the way that I'm this is the way that I'm going to going to start feeling better, right? Just watch out, watch out for all of that snark, watch out for all of the defeatism, watch out for trauma bonding, you guys, watch out for bonding with people over your misery. Don't 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 do that. So, thank you thank you so much for watching. And, um, and again, I really hope you take this to heart. And this is one of the easiest things to start implementing immediately. So I do want your feedback. Let me know how it goes for you. Join the repatterning parlor, make a post, tell me what you're, tell me what, uh, what language you're changing today. And then let's see where you are in another month or two, right? It's very exciting. Let's actually do this stuff and not just, not just sit around and watch it and talk about it, right? Let's actually, let's actually engage. Thank you guys for listening. I will see you in the next video.